days or months or years. They were moments. If you think of your life, how old are you? Are you a teenager? Are you in your 20s and 30s and 40s and 60s and 70s? When you think about your life, you just think of it as moments. Just flash, just run like that in front of you. And basically, that's the nature of life. It goes very fast. تَمُرُّ أَيَّامِ الْعُمُرِ سَرِيعَةً And all of a sudden it will be said, so and so passed away. So and so died. All of a sudden a news comes and hits you of the death of someone that you didn't expect. Someone that you know, someone who's close to you, or someone you don't know. There's a lot of people dying around us day and night. كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجْهَةٌ وَلَهُ الْحُكْمُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Everything will die except Allah, the creator of the death and life. No matter how long you live, it will always be short because it ends at one point. Noah, Nuh alayhi salam, was asked, you lived a thousand, over a thousand years. He lived over a thousand years. He was asked how that feels. قَالَ كَيْفَ وَقَدْ عِشْتَ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ أَلْفِ سَنَةٍ قال رأيت هذه الدنيا كرجل في دار دخل من باب وخرج من آخر. This life to me it's like you walking into a house or a room from one door and exit from the other door. That's how it felt. After all these years and decades, النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم saw once Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Al-As building and decorating his house. فَقَالْ لَهِ يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ الْأَمْرَ أَسْرَعُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ It is faster than what you think. يعني the end of this life is faster than what you think. You think you live very, very long, but in reality, no matter how long you live, it is very, very short. It's in the end of the day, if it's 70, 60, it's, it's short. And it goes like this. كَتَبَ عُمَرُ بْنُ عَبْدِ الْعَزِيزِ إِلَى الْأَوْزَاعِي يَقُولُ لَهِ أما بعد فإن من أكثر من ذكر الموت رضي من الدنيا باليسير. Those who think about death, this life, will be anything and it will be sufficient for them. No greed. Because they know that this is a temporary life. Muhammad ibn Sirin upon his death was in tears and he was asked, what make you cry at su- in such moment? قال أبكي لتفريطي في الأيام الخالية. وَقِلَّةِ عَمَلِي لِلْجَنَّةِ الْعَالِيَةِ وَمَا يُنْجِينِي مِنَ النَّارِ الْحَامِيَةِ I cry today because I have missed so many opportunities in my life to do good, to do what is right. And also, I have not done enough to earn the paradise that God has promised us. And I have not done enough to protect myself from the hellfire. I have not abstained from the thing that I know it will lead to the punishment of my Lord. One of the greatest ever kings that known in history in the medieval time, in, in, in Baghdad, in, in the Abbasi dynasty, Al-Ma'mun. One of the greatest kings that the, the Abbasi dynasty known when it comes to power. Upon his death, he said, take me down from my throne. Put me in the ground. And he put himself right on the ground and he said, I want to touch the, 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 the soil, the sand. He put his head on the sand. And he looked at the sand and he, he touched it and he said, Ya man la yazul mulku, irham man yazul mulku. He said, oh, the one whose kingdom, his power, his might will never change. Have mercy on the one that now he's losing his strength and his kingdom. Another great king before him in the Umayyad dynasty, which is before the Abbasis, he looked at his family crying around him because he is about to die. فقال هشام بن عبد الملك 
جاء هشام إليكم بالدنيا وجئتموه بالبكاء I'm leaving now behind me a great deal of wealth a great deal of money for you that's what I'm giving you before I, I, I die and what are you giving me tears and weeping and crying قال تركت لكم ما جمع وتركتم لي ما حمل I'm giving you all the thing that you never worked for. All his children and wives, he said, you never worked for what I work so hard for everything that you're going to have after me. This is something you didn't work for it. I work hard for it. And I'm leaving for my children now. But you know what I'm going to be leaving with? My sins and shortcoming. ما أعظم مصيبة هشام إن لم يرحمه الله Hisham in a great trouble, problem, big problem, if Allah does not have his mercy on me upon my death. Anything that is temporary is not a true joy. Anything. It's, it's a very short period of time. You enjoy your life, you enjoy your vacation, but it's not a true joy because it comes to an end. That's why the Quran emphasizes so much on the importance of always connecting your heart and your mind with the hereafter. Because the hereafter, it is this, the one thing that will last forever. So any joy there, it will continue to be better and better and you enjoy it more and more. You don't need to worry about when it will end and when you will be bored with it. وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ وَأَبْقَى الْآخِرَةُ is better and it will remain. يا قوم إنما هذه الحياة الدنيا متاع وإن الآخرة وإن الآخرة هي دار القرار. الدنيا it's a temporary joy, but the hereafter is that where you settle. يا أيها الذين آمنوا ما لكم إذا قيل لكم انفروا في سبيل الله إذ قلتم إلى الأرض أرضيتم بالحياة الدنيا من الآخرة فما متاع الحياة الدنيا في الآخرة إلا قليل Oh you believe why don't you respond to Allah's call? Are you so attached to this worldly life, to this earth, to the extent that you prefer it over the hereafter? Whatever joy in this life is nothing, is short, is temporary, comparing to what's in the hereafter. وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهُ وَلَعِبْ وَلَا وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ لَهِيَ دَارُ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانُ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ In Surah Al-Ankabut, يعني دار الحياة الأبدية. This dunya is what? It's just a له ولعب distractions and you know, and temporary joy and, and, and having maybe a little bit of fun. But in the end, it will, there is an end for it. But the hereafter, it's the life that it will never end. Allah says, في سورة الرعد, Allah يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء ويقدر. شوف إيش قال بعدها. وفرحوا بالحياة الدنيا. وما الحياة الدنيا في الآخرة إلا متاع. You're so happy with what you gain in this dunya, with the joy that you have in the dunya. You're so happy of it, with it. You're so proud of it. You're so excited about it. Whatever you see in this dunya from this life, you love so much. It's nothing comparing to the amount of happiness and joy that you will have in the hereafter. الذين يستحبون الحياة الدنيا على الآخرة ويصدون عن سبيل الله ويبغونها عوجا أولئك في ضلال بعيد. In Surah Ibrahim, Allah told us who are the one who in clear error, who are so misguided, 
who was so far away from the right path, are the one who prefer this dunya, this life over the next. The one who only focus on what related to this life, but they don't think about what's after death. وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ مِنْ شَيْءٍ يعني أي شيء Anything that you've been giving in this life, anything, anything that you're proud of, that you're happy with, that you love so much, anything. Huh? You cannot be more general than that. Allah says, فَمَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ If you can comprehend, if you can, if you can understand and comprehend, you will know that whatever you have in your hand and you enjoy today is nothing compared to what Allah has prepared for you in the hereafter. That concept is so clear in the Qur'an, so clear in the mind and the heart of the companions, that why this life and whatever in it never ever took over their hearts and their minds. And one of the things that always surprised me when the companions reach to the two great civilizations at that time. You know, when the Muslims came out from Arabia, there is two great civilizations, the Roman civilizations and the Persian civilization. No comparison between what's the Arabs upon. They have nothing. Live in desert. Nothing. Wallahi, when you read in the seerah, when you read in the history, they very simple life, no civilization, nothing. But can you imagine you bring someone like that and you put them in front of a giant civilization like the Roman civilization or the Persian civilization? You would never find a single narration shows you that a Sahaba radiallahu anhum or the believer, they were like so impressed by these two civilizations to the extent that they felt less or they felt, you know, like weak or they felt that they are in a lower level, or lower, or, or basically the lower hand, ever. Never look, oh my God, they were like so fascinated by their civilization. No. They benefit from it. They add to it. But they never were like, you know, taken by this glamorous civilizations at that time. Why? Because the dunya never was in their heart. This worldly life and all what's in it never was in their heart. It never was something that took over their life. The real life of the person, my brothers and sisters, the real value of your life is what you accomplish in this life. That it will lead to what will happen to you after death. That's the real value of this life. A dunya mazra, it's like a farm. Whatever seeds you put and you collect, you collect and it will happen after your death. When you look at the best example for humanity, are the prophets and the messengers that Allah have sent to humanity since day one, from Adam all the way to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa All these prophets and messengers that Allah have told us their stories in his books and send all these books, the the scripture of Noah, Abraham, Moose, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad Sallallahu and all the other prophets and messengers telling us about their stories, about their life, about their mission in life. You'll see clearly what kind of lifestyle that they had, what kind of goals that they had, what kind of impact that they left. And this is for not entertaining. This is not to make a movie out of it and to entertain us about their stories. No. Allah, after he mentioned 18 prophets by names to his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he told our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, after that, They are the one who Allah have guided, so follow their guidance. He telling our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to follow the guidance of the prophets and messengers. Follow their footsteps. Is it only Muhammad Sallallahu was ordered to do that? If that verse was only for Muhammad Sallallahu it means we need to follow the, the messenger as well. 
Yani Muhammad sallallahu with all the perfect knowledge and guidance that he already have, Allah told him to learn from the prophets and messengers. What about us? We indeed in more need for that. But not even that's logic conclusion that you come come in your own. No, Allah stated in the end of the verse, in huwa illa dhikra lil alameen. That's a reminder for all people to know the importance of looking at the life of the prophets and messengers. And if you look at their life, and their life, there is one clear thing you can see, a common factor between all of them. That the value of their lives, it's about what they accomplished, the change that they have made, the thing that they have left behind, that they were able to save themselves and so many people, not only in this life, but the most importantly in the next one. It is hard when I know that there is so many of us will live and die and will never be remembered. So hard when you think of yourself that way. Or you live your life and you end and you have nothing in the hereafter. That's the greatest loss. Wallahi, whatever you collect from the dunya means nothing if you come in the day of judgment empty handed. Because the true value of you is what you have done in this life and what you have earned in regard to the next life. And if you look at the life of the prophets and those who follow their footsteps, you'll be amazed. Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, when he dies, the Nabi said, اِهْتَزَّ لِمَوْتِ عَرْشُ الرَّحْمَانِ The throne of Allah was shaken by the death of Sa'd ibn Mu'ad. رضي الله عن أبي بكر حفظ الله به الأمة يوم الردة ورضي الله عن إمام أحمد حفظ به الله الأمة يوم المحنة These Abu Bakr giants Allah protect the whole entire Islam through him otherwise will, this religion will be lost He brought back people to the religion عمر رضي الله عن Allah opened through him the hearts before the lands Al-Quran comes four times to support Umar's opinions. Verses that we still recite until today. Ata ibn Rabah spent 30 years in the masjid learning. But guess what? He sp spread the knowledge of Ibn Abbas and the knowledge of the Sahaba for generations to come. These are the Imams, the Fuqaha, the great scholars of Hadith, the great scholars of Fiqh that we until today we benefit from their knowledge. Ibn Taymiyyah who, who wrote more than a thousand books some of these books, it takes months just to rewrite them again, or to months to explain them, while he wrote them in a few hours, rahimahullah. Sheikhna, so many people that I witnessed, Sheikhna, Sheikh bin Baz, rahimahullah. I just this week, I've been writing a paper, and you don't know how many times I go back, and during Hajj, get so many questions, I still go back and see what the Sheikh said, what's the fatwa of Sheikh bin Baz is. As if he's alive today with us. As if he's alive. Now preparing for the khutbah, going back to Sheikh Al-Albani, what did he say about this hadith? As if he's still alive. That's, you know what? Not only that, there is people build masajid, there is people have helped or established organizations, there is people have guided others. There is people have left behind a great family, a great community. Not everyone will be a scholar, not everyone will be a sheikh, not everyone will be author of books. Shah Abdul Rahman Smith, it was said that about five million people enter Islam because of him. Five millions in Africa. I think that's a question that we should ask ourselves, what I will left behind me when I die? How can you Leave this dunya while you have left behind something worthwhile. When you look back at your life, you know what? It's worth looking at. It's worth remembering. Yes, people will leave. We will be departing from each other. But you know what? Before we depart, before we leave, and no one knows who will die and when will die, make sure that you prepare for your akhir. Because even if you do nothing but to save yourself, to raise your rank in Jannah, that's in itself great win.
ذلك الفوز العظيم يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى It's a great success to save yourself from hellfire and enter Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from the hellfire and make us among Ahl al-Jannah. أقول ما سمعت ما استغفر الله لي ولكم. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters, I hope that today's khutbah wake us up. We're living in a time, I call it Zaman al-Tafaha. Yani we're living in a time where the time of silly things which matter the most. Silly, excuse my expression, stupid things are what matter the most. That's what TikTok is about. That's what the social media is about. That's what gets the whole world talking and focusing on. People don't anymore have great values. Great ambitions, real impacts, real change. Things become so artificial. But you know what's not artificial? وجاءت سكرة الحق بالموت. في قراءة وجاءت سكرة الموت بالحق. It's the death that is ultimate truth. There's no joke. It's the ultimate truth. That's something nobody can escape. Nobody can deny. فضح الموت الدنيا. Death have exposed this life, as Al-Hassan al-Basri said. And one of the things that shocked the people, like I was shocked at so many mil- hundreds of thousands, not a, and it can be even said, to the million of people shocked by the death of one of my greatest, closest friend recently, just yesterday. Young man, nobody expecting that. Just, hey, so-and-so died, passed away. Just like that. Mawtul Fajr, there is narration that is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. The closer to people, the judgment, sudden death will be common. Sudden death, it doesn't mean that this person is bad or good, necessarily. Sudden death, if it's for a good person, it means a good thing. If it's a bad person, it's a good, it means this is a punishment from Allah. Allah just want to end the evil of that person's life. But also if the person is righteous as good, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to save this person from the suffering of death. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to say to bring him to him, closer to him, so Allah protect him from things might be bad in the future. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to protect him from him, so he die upon good before he change. So that sudden death can be interpreted based on the person's situation. And in the end of the day, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Death will meet you, will hunt you down. You can't escape death. It's one thing that we always, we all know it's going to happen. And no one can say it's not going to happen to me because I'm young or older. Everybody can be dying. We have in this masjid people who are in, were like, you know, athletics and working on a diet. People who are old die. قال جبريل للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما روى الطبراني من حديث سهل بن سعد قال يا محمد أحبب من شئت فإنك مفارقه Love you Muhammad of everyone one day you will leave him or that person will leave you إذا جاء أجلهم فإذا جاء أجلهم لا يستأخرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون ولا يؤخر الله نفسا إذا جاء أجلها عبد الله بن مسعود يقول ما أصبح أحد إلا وهو ضيف وماله عارية فالضيف مرتحل والمال والعارية مردودة I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as I end this khutbah to make us think more seriously about our life because the real meaning of life sometimes can be recognized by thinking about death I think one of the most beautiful things about death it make my life has more value when I think about death, it makes my life has more value to me. 
I take more advantage of it. I don't waste my days and, 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 and moments. Because when I die, I'm not just going to be die. And no. فَلَوْ أَنَّا إِذَا مُتْنَا تُرِكْنَا لَكَانَ الْمَوْتُ رَاحَةَ كُلِّ حَيٍّ وَلَكِنَّا إِذَا مُتْنَا بُعِثْنَا وَنُسْأَلُ بَعْدَهُ عَنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ If we will just die and we just vanished, death will be the best things ever. I wish it for me now, right now. To, to rest. But when you die, you will be standing before your Lord and you will be asked about your life. And that's the point. That would make your life worth. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, attaqu Allah, wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat lighad. Wa attaqu Allah, inna Allah khabirun bima ta'maloon. اللهم ارزقنا حسن عاقبتنا في الأمور كلها وأجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب النار اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من فجاءة نقمتك وغضبك ونقمتك وجميع سخطك والنار يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ودعاء لا يرفع اللهم إنا نسألك حسن الخاتمة توفنا وأنت راض عنا غير غضبان وارحم جميع موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اغفر لموتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اغفر لموتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اغفر لأصحابنا وأحبابنا ومن مات وعلمائنا ودعاتنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله